In this video, I'm going to quickly demonstrate how you can create an audio controller to easily play music and sound effects in your game. I have downloaded a free sound effects pack off of itch.io. I will put a link in the description so you can download the same pack if you want to follow along. Otherwise, if you have your own music and sound effects already, feel free to use those. I have placed mine in a folder named audio. If you are looking to add music or other sound effects to your game, I'm assuming you already have a game you're working on, so this video will focus on adding audio to an existing game and not on building the game. The project I am starting with I built in the last video. I will leave a link in the description if you want to check that out. It has pretty basic player controls and transitions to the second level upon going into the door. Let's start by adding a new scene. It's going to be a Node 2D and let's call it Audio Controller. You can save that. I'm going to place mine in the audio folder and I'm going to call it Audio Controller Scene. Next, let's add three audio stream players to our audio controller. So make sure audio controller is selected, hit the plus, and search audio stream player. Duplicate that. The first one we're going to call music. The second one let's call jump. And the third one let's call end level. Let's start with the music first. The audio I'm using for the background music is going to be in the audio folder, the free sound effects package, and then it would be game sound effects, music, NES style, and it's going to be this retro music loop one. Before we add it, make sure you click on it in the file explorer and then come up here to import. For this one, we want it to play in a loop. So to do that, Make sure it's selected in the file explorer, click on import up here, and then loop mode, change to forward. Yours by default might not be forward. Make sure it's forward, and then click re-import. Now we can go back to our scene. Make sure music is selected. And then we're going to drag this file to the stream player right there. Next, let's do our jump. Close the music folder and go up bounce jump and it's going to be retro jump classic this one so make sure jump is selected and then you can drag this over to the stream player for this one i'm going to change the pitch to 1.75 and last let's do the end level so make sure end level is selected close the bounce jump folder and we're actually going to go back to the music folder we're going to go to success Let's make this a little bigger. It's going to be Retro Success Melody 1. Drag this over to the stream player. For this one, we're going to change the volume to 7 and then the pitch to 1.5. So we can save that and now make sure audio controller is selected and we're going to attach a script to this. We're going to save that in the audio folder, audio controller script. Here in our audio controller script, it's pretty basic. We have an export variable to mute. This is more just for development purposes if you want to turn all the sounds off with the click of a button. All you need to do is make sure audio controller is selected and you can click the mute and turn it on and that will just mute everything. In the ready function, if it's not muted, we're just going to call play music, which in this case is playing our background music. And then we have two other functions, play jump, which will play the jump sound effect, and then the play end level will stop the background music and then play the end level sound. Our audio controller is now complete, so now we can start to implement it. Let's come up to our project, project settings. We're going to add an auto load. So click on auto load, click on the file explorer, and ours is going to be an audio, and then it's going to be the audio controller scene. Click on that. Make sure your node name is audio controller and click add. So the easiest one to implement will just be the jump sound effect. So let's go to your player script. Find where your character is jumping, and you're simply just going to add audio controller dot play jump. Now, depending on your project, whether you're following along with us or working on your own, we put the play end level logic inside our function that is handling the level transition. When the end level transition scene starts, it's going to play the end level function, which if you remember, is going to stop the background music and then play the end level sound. We added a one second timeout that is just for preference. And then the only other line is after the level fully transitions, we start the background music back up. So now we can run the game and everything should work as expected.
Well, I suppose.